Hi, I'm John Park. I've just set up a little digital TV in my shop, but I can't get a picture with my old antenna. If you're in a spot where you don't get great reception, you may need a new antenna. Now, here's a classic design. This is called a Hoverman antenna, but it'll set you back a few bucks. Now, looking at it, it's really just a bunch of wire. So I'm going to show you how to make a great digital TV antenna using a piece of wood and a bunch of wire coat hangers. Let's get to work. I'm going to start with a piece of wood 3 inches by 20, and this is going to serve as the base for the antenna. Now, I'm going to transfer some measurements to this from our plans, which are available on the website. These spacings are really important if you want to get good reception. So I'll start off making a mark 2 inches from the end, and then I'm going to make another one 5 and 3 quarters, another 5 and 3 quarters, and one more. Then I'm going to measure in a half inch from the edge of each of these marks. This is where the screws will go that hold the whole project together. Now it's time for our hangers. You're going to need six of them. First, I'll take four of them and cut the tops off. I want to use some heavy duty cutters for this. Now I'll cut these in half, and that's going to give me a little V shape. Since there's a strange shape in the bottom here, I'm going to want to straighten that out with some pliers. And then I want to measure out an 8 inch length for each leg of the V. If it's too long, you can trim the end off. This one actually came out just perfect. OK, so now I'm going to take some pliers and put a nice tight bend to get an opening that's 3 inches between the legs. That looks good. So you'll end up with eight of these. Now with the remaining two hangers, I'm going to cut their hooks off and then just straighten them out with some pliers. I'm going to take some time doing this so you get a nice straight piece of wire. Next, I drive eight screws into the board with washers, one for each V-shaped wire. I'm only screwing them in halfway for now. And now I'm going to take one of my straight wires and bend it according to the plans into the board. Okay, I'm just going to loop these over the screws. Then I'm going to take a couple of pairs of pliers and bend these so they make nice contact with the screws. that, and like that. Now just straighten these last two. I'm going to do this for both wires, and then I can trim off the excess on the end. I finished bending my wires, and now, just like in the plan, I'm going to need to attach each of the eight V's to these eight screws. But before I do that, I'm going to want to sand the bottom of the V's and the long wires where they contact each screw. This way, I'll get a strong electrical connection when they're attached. All right, I've sanded off all my V's and all the connection points on the long wires. I've also sanded the centers of the wires. This is where the antenna is going to connect to the television. And one more important thing, I used some electrical tape to insulate the long wires from each other where they meet. So now, it's time to put it together. I've built a base for the antenna using plywood and some pipe and fittings. I've also bolted it on using these U-bolts. Now, around the front, I've got an impedance matching transformer. This is where I'll plug it into the TV. Let's try it out. Hey, it works great. This is a beautiful looking picture. On the dog screamer. Must be one of these dog walking reality shows, huh? This camera work is pretty jerky, and I've got just the project to fix that. This is what they use in movies and TV shows when they have a fast moving shot. It's called a Steadicam. It's an unbelievable machine. It has this beautifully built articulated arm 
with springs and cables to reduce the jiggle. It also has this rotating gimbal and a counterweight. Ken, thanks for coming out today. Yeah, you're welcome. John. So tell me, how much does a rig like this cost? This model costs about $26,000. Wow. Okay. And does it take a lot to learn how to use it? Well, I went to a Steadicam operators course in California and then spent about three months practicing to learn how to use it. It's awesome. Now, we're going to build something a little bit simpler, and it's going to cost a lot less, about $25. Here's what you'll need to build your own Steadicam. Three pieces of half-inch diameter pipe threaded at both ends, a T-joint to connect them, some assorted hardware, and I'm using a two and a half pound counterweight for our camera. So let's go ahead and assemble it. I'll start with this long pipe, which is the main body of our camera rig. I'll set it in the vise here, and then I'm gonna screw on this T-joint so I can connect the other parts. Now, this medium piece will be the handle, and I've got a nice little bicycle grip that I'm gonna use. Slip this on here, and finally, this short piece will go on top, and that's where I'll attach the camera. I've carefully drilled a hole through the end cap. This is where I'm gonna put the bolt to attach the camera. Here's one I did earlier. So I've placed the bolt through with a washer, lock washer, and a nut. And now, this is the cool part, I'm gonna take a wing nut, put it on upside down, and this will allow me to tighten it up to the camera. Finally, I've got this washer that'll act as a base. I'm gonna add the weight to the bottom, but first, let me place a handle on here so I'll be able to rotate the rig. Now, I'm gonna place a nut on the end of the pipe, thread that on there, and add my weight. Got a big washer to hold it in place, and finally, another end cap. And now I'm gonna go tighten this up. All right, that's on good and tight. So now I'm gonna place the end cap on the end, screw it down, put the washer on top, and now I can thread the camera's tripod hole onto there. Just give it a couple of turns and then do all of the tightening with the wing nut. Great, let's check it out. Oh yeah, that moves really smoothly. I think it's time to take it out and shoot some video. Wow, what a difference this makes. I'm John Park, and I'll see you next time on The Maker Workshop. Major funding for Make is provided by Geek Squad.